Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel The Bushcraft Padawan. If you've been keeping close tabs on my videos recently you'll know that I talked about in a recent video, it's appearing in the top right hand corner of your screen now, that I was going to go away on a formal course with Frontier Bushcraft and Paul Kirtley doing their Intermediate Wilderness Bushcraft course and that's where I am right now. It is Monday morning. We all arrived here late yesterday afternoon, five, half five yesterday afternoon it started. So what my plan is, is each morning when I get the opportunity, I will do a recap of what we did the day before. Now there's not much to recap in this video because we didn't meet up until half five yesterday evening. So a brief recap on Monday morning and then from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning, it will be slightly longer because we've had a full day on the course. So there are, I think there's about 10 to 12 of us on the course, I must admit, I don't know. I know there are four of us in the group that I am in, along with John, Tom and Simon. So if you're watching this, fellas, good morning. Um, so there are four of us in my team, there's about 10 to 12 overall. We met up and we got our kit on, we walked about a kilometre down into a small valley that I'm in at the moment, which I didn't realise when I when, when I set up, is damn near to, to a small country road just over, just behind us. You may hear some traffic. We're only here, we were only here for last night, we're moving on, hopefully, to somewhere slightly further and slightly more remote from the damn bloody traffic came to get away from all of that. So we're just here for the evening. There's a small stream trickling behind me as well that you'd be lucky to hear over the top of the traffic. So we sat down yesterday evening once we'd got our once we'd got our tarps up and our sleeping kit out and all, all of once we'd settled in we set up and, and we spent an hour, hour and a half with Paul and Henry and James um, the three the three staff that are on the course. And um, Paul talked about for those of people that have done the elementary course or something akin to the elementary course, that was much more about immediate bushcraft. Create something, use it, get a result, or don't get a result. Find something, craft it, utilize it, get a result, or don't get a result. Very, very immediate. The intermediate, which is what I'm on now, is much more of a long game. It's about taking time to create things that may take some time to create to actually bring about effect in a longer term game plan, not as immediate. At least, at least I hope that's what he meant. Uh, I've got here my notes, elementary, immediate, intermediate, elementary, immediate, intermediate, longer term, impact, foundational. I'm not sure that makes sense when I read it back. But anyway, Paul then went on um, and talked about the fact that we're, work we're going to be working in teams much more than we were when we were on the elementary. On the elementary, we were in teams, but everything we did was on our own. We made a bow drill kit on our own and we used it on our own. This is much more about working in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in teams or at least in pairs. And Henry and James gave us a really good demo of a two-man bow drill and just how in comparison, although these guys make even the individual bow drill look easy, how in comparison it should be much easier and it's about utilising all the resources around you, not just the nat well, not just the woodland resources, but the resources in one another as well. So I thought that was a, that was a nice touch. And he made, a, he made a great, he kept making the point about be deliberate in what you do, be deliberate in what you do. If the bow drill doesn't look good enough, make it look good enough. If the, if, the, if the bow isn't quite right, get one that is quite right. So, you know, and, and he talked about this a lot on the elementary, and every time I see Paul, he talks about this, about taking the time to craft the materials to the very best that you can, and then start the process. Don't make a half-assed attempt at, the, at, at crafting them, and then struggle for much longer with the process, resulting in possibly not even being successful. We then broke off in our teams of four. We went back to our uh, our camp areas and we cooked the evening meal. I think made pasta, bolognese sauce, um, couscous, and chorizo. And, and very nice it was too. Um, that was that was day one. Very very short day. As I said, we we didn't meet up in the car park pub car park until half five. I got my head down about ten o'clock last night. So you can imagine there's only really about, there's less than four hours of actual contact time with the course. That's why this is a very, very short 
Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening recap. From this point on, folks, expect to see more photographs, more B-roll footage, and a um, and, and a greater insight from me about the takeaways that we've got or that we're getting each day from the course. So keep watching. Another five days to go. It won't feel like five days, I hope, on video. And, and let's see what Monday unfolds. Day one of the course, true. Me again. It is 20 past seven on Tuesday morning. So let's have a chat and a reflect back upon what we covered yesterday, which was Monday. Monday, we packed up from that brief overnight camp that we'd been set up on a Sunday evening and we walked probably 20 to 30 minutes to an area that uh, I've been in, or general area that I've been in before on one of Frontier Bushcraft's courses. We got there, we dropped our kit and then we sat around for a while and, um, and Paul talked about what the priorities were for the next 24 hours or so. And they seemed, on the surface, to be quite simple. One was to start a fire by bow drill in our groups away we went and the other was also to build one of two four-man shelters we could either build a TP type shelter or we were given the option and Henry did a great job of building some models and demoing how we could take the traditional forest lean-to type shelter but four of them the openings all facing one another one would have a door in and a fire in the middle and I have to say that took the vast majority and I wouldn't even go so far as to say it's completely finished that took the vast majority of yesterday my job yesterday was, was basically ferrying millbank bags backwards and forwards throughout the entire day um, that was my key takeaway I think from the day yesterday one of the things that Paul talked about was, you know, we, we read and we know when our gut tells us that this is important or this is tricky or that's hard or this is critical. And we kind of know that what is critical. We know that. We all know. You know that and I know that. But it's not until you get outside and there, there is no jerry can. There is no tap in the house. There is no jerry can that you can go to to fill up your water bottles. It's every single drop that we've consumed since Sunday evening has been naturally sourced from a stream or yesterday from a, a, a large pond small lake that we were shown carrying it back filtering it boiling it repeating the process getting into a routine so that once you've got the mill bank bags you've actually got some pots to put the damn stuff into to then boil it and starting the process again and i think over the course of yesterday, we've got quite slick at that. Now, I've just come back again, it's 24 minutes past seven now. I've just gone back from doing another run down there um, with a guy on the course, um, John, with four mill bank bags on a, on a length of, um, uh, uh, on a branch and a gen and a billy can as well, full of water, bringing that back up. And that process just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating. And it's, uh, I think we've got ourselves into a good routine even with the overnight break. So that was a big lesson from yesterday. Blair, we've done a great job on, on building that four-man shelter. Paul talked about then at the end of the day, once we've got the shelters built, so we got into a routine, we went over for a brief with Paul. Paul talked about um, just reiterating hygiene, talked about what we're gonna to do today, which is to go out, um, I do a long tree and plant ID slash foraging walk, look for some materials that we can use, because what, what I discovered yesterday is that we were so hot, we were drinking tepid water, water that was still just off the boil. It would cool down enough to drink, but it's not the most exciting thing or tasty thing to drink. And of course, because it's not exciting or tasty, naturally your body doesn't crave it as much. Therefore, you, you're, you know, you're already dehydrated, but naturally you're slowing down even more. So I imagine we'll be finding some berries or some spruce and pine needles, things like that to drop in there just to give it a little bit of taste. Paul also gave a hand drill demo yesterday evening. Um, and that's one of the things that we're gonna start the process of today. And then we all came back to our individual camps. Our camps are spread out quite a way. I, I've got a vague idea where some other guys are. And they've got to be four, five, five, six, seven hundred meters away. So we're, we're, we're quite well spread out. We've not really seen, other than when we come together for a briefing, we've not seen any of the other groups at all in passing there. They're certainly not visible and we're not really walking past them when we go and get the water. So it's, it's feeling like, um, which is good, quite an isolated experience with just the four of us in this team. So that was yesterday. As I said, the entire day, water, 
and shelter building with a tiny little break here and there for a brief or something but shelter on water building but i think we've got ourselves established now i think we've got into a good routine we've got a good shelter got a good water collection um filtration and purification process um hopefully all set up for uh, for what tuesday will bring us and via the magic video editing here i am 24 hours later it is wednesday morning so let's look back at what we covered yesterday which was by my reckoning tuesday tuesday started off with breakfast around the fire it, again when we're working almost predominantly in our four man and a, and a three man team this isn't the, the big communal breakfast like on the elementary and the woodcrafter this is much uh, this is much more team based breakfast was bacon egg and bannock we then wandered over to the oh, the teaching area the admin area the staff's area and we did some two-man hand drill warm-up they've been very keen to impress that just jumping into doing hand drill having never done it before or not having hands that are in con good condition will just wipe you out for the rest of the week your hands will blister the skin will come off and it's not just going to ruin your chances of getting an ember by hand drill it's going to ruin going to ruin your chances of doing anything if you are planning to use your hands which i think we probably were so just a few minutes no more than that a few a few rundowns on the spindle to warm our hands up um, and to start the, to get them conditioned for hand drill we then wandered off with a little bit of foraging for some materials we took down some uh, some hazel for um to make a digging stick we made a digging stick out there we also harvest some nettles for lunch later that day james talked about making withers never got a chance to actually make any yesterday uh, i'm not sure anybody did but we talked through once again the principles of withers we took those all back to the staff area uh, to a teaching area we then wandered out and took some um, some willow we felled it we looked for some um, willow we felled a tree and we we brought that back up to, and we made a lot a hell of a lot it felt like a lot of cordage from that downed willow and we, we went through a process of, of of taking the cordage off cutting it into strips soaking it in water with a good handful of ash in there to make i think they call a lye solution or lime solution a lye solution which is a preservative we boiled that for an hour um, and that's currently sat on our drying rack, drying in the rain. <laughs> um, we then went foraging for some spruce cordage, or for some cordage from spruce roots. Much more successful this time than I was on the elementary where I ended up with either something that was hair thin or something that you could tow a car with. So much more successful this time around. And it was interesting, yes, we've done uh, I've done foraging for spruce root cordage previously but doing it this time around everything just fell into place a little bit quicker everything just felt a little bit slick even though I've not practiced it so one of the objectives of the, the, the of this intermediate course is to build upon and revisit the elementary skills and we're doing that and it's just interesting to see how far I've moved along either because I've been naturally practicing them anyway or even if I haven't I think just building upon a knowledge that's been locked away somewhere up here even if it's been for a year or two has proven quite interesting we after the spruce root cordage we also made some broilers a broilers been as you can see in the photograph here i've made an attempt at one of these previously but i mean this was a this was a four-man broiler this was a beast of a broiler we all made one of those and we used it later on in the day i'll come to that we all we then right towards the end of the day we went and harvest in fact if i move out the camera slightly just see down here where is it there we go sweet chestnut was taken down and like a, like a horde of locusts we were all over it harvesting back from that to make a basket and then henry took us through making a basket i must admit by this point in the day i was <laughs> i was flagging a little and i know a few others were as well so it just i don't know it just it didn't quite go and i've made a basket you can see it in the picture i've made it but you know i mean thrown together is an underestimate to be perfectly honest so I, I you know i think this is going to be like the spoon carving for me on the elementary course something that i didn't necessarily enjoy at the time something that felt like a bit uh, at the time but actually once i go back home and i sort of revisit this video and i and i think it's been one of those things that has been a foundation it's a seed has been sown shall we say i think with the basket making for me to come back and do again but i mean it's functional i can put things in it and move things from a to b which i guess is the purpose of a basket but my heart and soul didn't go into it if i'm being really honest 
Uh, during the day we also talked briefly about some trapping um, and, and, and some particular techniques that we looked at or talked about briefly. And then for, for evening meal or for tea, we had um, a steak which cooked on the broiler and some sweet potatoes. We dug a subsurface oven, put the sweet potatoes in there, laid them back over with, with a layer of earth. All this being from an, a, a, um, a fire that had been um, raging or, or been hot all day long. So the ground was incredibly, incredibly hot. We, um, we buried the potatoes under that, piled it back up with some earth again, and they cooked, um, they cooked brilliantly probably about an hour, hour and 15, they were under there. So a very, very nice evening meal steak and sweet potatoes and a boiled egg that we had left over from breakfast. So it's, it's interesting, when I read these things out and I've got that list, there we go, there's the list in front of me there. You kind of think, is that it in, in the days? <laughs> wow, you know, the, the, the days are full. The instruction as always is spot on. We're, we're walking to different areas to see the resource in situ, to harvest the resource there and then, rather, having it ha rather than having it brought to us all pre-felled or pre-prepared or anything like that. It, it, I guess, I guess this is as realistic as you can get without taking the, the staff and the instructors out of the equation. So a very, very busy second day. Today is Wednesday, so I'll see you back here in a few seconds slash 24 hours to see what Wednesday had in store for us. It's Thursday morning, so let's talk about what we did on Wednesday, shall we? Wednesday was usual start time. We, we sort of got up around seven o'clock as we've been doing each morning, a couple of hours admin and, and farting around and cooking and what have you around the fire and then starting the teaching phase at nine o'clock each morning. First thing was hand drill practice once again. They just reiterated that, that, that just diving into hand drill for the very first time is a foolish thing to do. So we're just working on toughening the hands up and perfecting the technique just for five minutes, probably five minutes drilling each day just to build up those, that, that rough skin and that technique. Then Paul talked about the fact that for the remainder of the day, and it, it was the remainder of the entire day, we were going to go out and talk about foraging. We were going to talk about the theory of it. We were going to look at some things en route to a pond. And then once we got to that location, we were going to forage in and around that water source. Absolutely loads covered today, an incredible amount. There was, there was no way I was going to be able to write it all down. There was no way I was going to be able to, to capture it all um, on my camera for this. But once again, it's, it's that, that great thing that they do here at Frontier, which is to introduce you to just enough for you to be able to pick it up, or in my experience, for you to be able to pick it up when you go home. Some areas we dive down into in more detail, which I guess was the, was the, the crux of the teaching points for the day. But in other areas, it was just enough of a seed sown for me to go and do some research afterwards. Because it was a foraging day, trim plant ID, clearly, clearly at the, at the forefront of that, which was fantastic because as you know, I've been doing the tree and plant ID masterclass for a couple of years now. There's a link to the playlist to those videos appearing in the top right hand corner of your screen right now. So once again, it was good to get out, to go over old safe ground that I'd, that I'd become familiar with, but also to go over ground that I, we'd spoken about on the course, I was familiar-ish with, but actually to be able to see it for real. So in no particular order, we looked at um, water peppers. My God, that, that's hot. That's really hot. Uh, Rowan, pendulous sedge, and, um, and I found for the rest of the day, I was just walking along the sedges, pulling the seed heads off and just nibbling on them. A very nice, seedy, nutty type of, um, uh, of, of snack as you're going around. Don't get a lot from it, but certainly if you were to collect a lot of it, you could, uh, you, you could make some recipes out there. You could probably put it into the bannock. Um, Henry, one of the instructors on the course, has made a crumble for the top of an apple crumble with it. So lots you can do if you collect it en masse, but also just equally an interesting snack as I was walking around the woods as well. We talked about lime, wood havens, wound wart slash dead nettle. Um, we looked at some dangerous stuff. There's, there's a fair bit of arum maculatum. Lords and ladies, cuckoo pins as we were walking around. So we looked at we looked at that for those people that weren't familiar with it. We looked at several different types of mints, not tree bore, extra strong. 
um, wild angelica ground ivy and then we eventually um, after a very long well it wasn't a very long walk it was a couple of miles but trust me <laughs> my knee was letting me know that it felt like it was a, 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 a much greater distance than it was we finally got to the the, the lake the pond and then we um, we went through the process of identifying cat's tails tifa latifolia we got a fire prepped because the plan was that we were going to go pretty much en masse into the water. We were going to um, root out, pun intended, the, the, the tubers from the Tifa Latif. We were going to um, pass those back to, to the shore and there's almost going to be this human chain of people harvesting, pushing it through the water, continuous human chain onto the bank where somebody would then would then take off these these tubers which are packed with starch and therefore carbohydrates so I, I got stripped down got into the water bloody freezing probably the worst thing I could have done because my thinking was the cold water on the knee perfect and it was cold and it was on my knee but it was also probably above waist height in silt so I was walking kind of doing knees to chest like this walking through the water um, yeah, so absolutely not the best thing in retrospect for the knee. You live and learn, hey? We got the cat's tails, we got them out, we harvested them, we cooked them up, we ate them. Yeah. <laughs> it's a necessary food stuff and, it, and, and it's a good survival. Uh, T for Latifolia in itself, loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of different uses, including as a food source. And I don't want to decry the nutritional value of it, but it's just like... Um, it's hard to describe, there's nothing to it. It's like a slimy, stringy thing that you just chew. You kind of swallow what comes off of that and then spit it out and you end up with what looks like a ball of chewing gum being spat out. So yes, there is sustenance, but not in the traditional sense. And again, I think that was a good learning point that you don't necessarily have to swallow something, consume something, internalize something for it to add value to you where you know chewing the, the starch off these of these tubers and swallowing that liquid so i guess you are ingesting it um can be just as valuable if in this sort of situation that we find ourselves in this week once that had finished paul took us for a walk around the, the wet area that we were in to look at and identified you know we, we looked at more ground ivy we, I, I harvested a fair amount of um of mint what was it called water water mint didn't write it down I have to check with that I think it was water mint we have did some of that to make a tea later on in the day and then on the way back from there we identified some burdock leaves uh, we harvested the leaves for food wrapping we dug out the roots to consume again and to eat those we made our way back to camp Back at camp, fire going, usual nighttime routine. For evening meal, it was uh, chicken wrapped in the burdock leaves, salmon wrapped in the burdock leaves, buried under a thin layer of ash and soil under the fire. 40 minutes for the chicken, 20 minutes for the salmon. Once they came up, we'd also um, put on some of the cat's tails onto the fire that we'd harvested from the pond and brought back with us. I must admit, they took a lot, they seemed to take a lot longer to cook in an evening than they did during the day and um, I, I, I'd gone to bed by the time they were ready to be perfectly honest so that was uh, that was day that was Wednesday let's not get into what day it was that was Wednesday of the uh, the intermediate wilderness bushcraft course with Frontier Bushcraft that was Wednesday long day a tiring day didn't walk that far in reality if I'd have walked that distance on a normal fresh day wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't have thought a thing about it but I think all, all of us and, and, the, and the staff recognise that we're not perhaps consuming our normal amount of calories or we're not perhaps consuming the calories in the ratio that we normally would they're giving us the protein we're having to hunt out the carbohydrates so a lot of time was spent during the day explaining to people physiologically why people might be feeling the way they are why um, why the body's responding the way it is to not consuming what it is used to consuming in terms of carbohydrate intake. Fantastic day, long day, tiring day, hungry day. It wasn't a hungry day, it was a tiring day more than a hungry day. But um, yeah, onwards and upwards. It's now Thursday morning, so I'm gonna get this camera packed up. I'm gonna get back over, finish my admin off, get over to the teaching area, and let's see what Thursday brings us. 
it's Friday, so let's talk about Thursday. Breakfast as usual, eggs, bacon, bannock. I think we knocked up a pancake as well. Certainly get enough to eat um, for, for breakfast, I must admit. Then we went across the teaching area, did more hand drill practice. Again, toughening the hands up, conditioning the hands, not jumping in feet first. Although, I must admit, we've only got a day, two days left of the course today and tomorrow so um, hopefully we'll, we'll start edging towards getting our hands in condition ready to hopefully create an ember. Uh, we were using clematis as the half board and elder as the spindle and then speaking about the the actual spindles themselves we spent quite a bit of time yesterday morning being shown how to select the right spindle and then strip the bark uh, heat it up over a fire just enough to be able to, to, to flex it and to bend it and to hold it in place and what we're looking for is as straight a piece as elder as we can possibly get and we are, we're advised to put it to one side come back to it after a couple of hours maybe after a day straighten it again this isn't one of those um, pieces of kit like a bow drill where you can just take it fashion it and use it it needs some conditioning but it and from, from what i've seen it lasts a lot longer than bow drill as well so there's a trade-off i guess between the immediacy and the long-term benefit you can get from it once we'd finished those hand drill spindles we wandered across to an area that's actually as i'm recording this video i don't know why i'm pointing it out because you can't see it but just over there um we set up some squirrel poles and some squirrel snares they've been out now for about 24 a little less than 24 hours nothing in them as yet i keep checking we then um we then had soup for lunch what did we have it was it was wild mush no it was mushroom and wild rice soup and very nice it was too we then wandered over to one of the other groups um areas to have a look at the area that they'd set up and get talked through their admin there and henry one of the instructors on the course took us through making netting needles not knitting needles netting needles quite an intricate process beautiful when they're created um, i created one and um, split it so i created a second one and split it then i created a third one yep you can fill the gaps in can't you and split it so clearly my ham-fisted nature is uh, is not well suited to carving netting needles although again just like on the elementary course when i wasn't that taken with spoon carving once i got back home and i got the time to focus on it and go through it more methodically like i like to do uh, i'm sure it'll be something that i can i can have another second fourth attempt at fifth attempt sixth attempt so I didn't make a netting needle unfortunately yesterday, which was a shame. What I did do was create the, the world supply of cordage from the willow that we downed early on in the week, where I said that we downed it, we'd, um, we'd cut it into sections, split it into lengths, cut it into sections, we'd soaked it in ash and boiling water, we dried it, we then re-soaked it yesterday, and I made quite a lot of natural cordage, which I quite like doing, I, I do enjoy that. It's, um, it's one of those things that, that there's an element of, of, there's a small element of technique, a lot of muscle memory, and you can almost, you can almost do it with your eyes, you can do it with your eyes closed to a huge degree. You can be, you know, you can be looking around, you can be talking to other people, you can be taking things in, and your hands can just be working away at making this cordage. I do find it quite, uh, quite relaxing. And then, uh, then was, was sorry, shit's looking at the top of my head there as I'm looking at my notes. That took up the rest of the afternoon. We then went back to teaching area where Paul and Henry had the biggest leg of lamb I've ever seen dangling from a tripod, dangling from a length of paracord um, on the end of a, of, a, of a green wood spike, dangling between what would look like a conventional fire to one side. Underneath it was some hot embers and then to the other side was another conventional fire but it had what many people would consider, I guess, to be a fire reflector. And Paul was talking about how, how fire reflectors don't actually reflect heat back at you, or the amount that they reflect back at you is inconsequent, you know, it's insignificant. What they're actually really useful for is setting fire to, so you can almost have a vertical, there's the meat, there, my elbows are on the ground, there's the meat, my notepad. You can almost have this vertical grill of heat, side grilling, just like in a kebab shop, the side of lamb. So we went away, we recreated that, we cooked that, and we had an, a perfectly cooked piece of lamb after a couple of hours, and some lovely cat's tails to wash them down with. Ah, 
and that was that was the day that was Thursday so today's Friday keep watching and let's see what we get up to today it is Saturday morning so let's have a look at what we covered yesterday Friday breakfast as usual bacon eggs bannock I think we had pancakes yesterday living the life of luxury uh, we then went over to the teaching area and once again as we've done I think every morning of this week we have uh, over the past week we did some hand drill practice again toughening those hands up then um, me and Tom the guy that I've been working with we seem to be getting a good amount of dust which is brilliant but as yet no ember has formed from that so we keep going we keep practicing we keep refining the skill we keep toughening our hands up and keep building day after day after day till hopefully it happens in the not too distant future we carried on oh, i carried on making a little bit more finishing off some of the cordage that we did the uh, the the day previous day so i've got quite a lot of natural cordage with me now and then Henry took us through um, built some models for us about how to build log beds. We've got our shelters now, we've got this four-man shelter, but him himself and Paul talked about being able to get yourselves up off the floor for comfort, to allow heat to pass under you from a fire if you've got that within your shelter, to act as a bench to sit on, to admin yourselves um, and, and stuff like that. So we, then, we, we were then turned loose for, must have been the better part of two and a half, three hours to make these log beds and trust me, they well, they certainly took me two and a half, three hours, and I didn't quite finish it. So I got the bed up off the floor. I got it elevated, which was good, but didn't quite finish putting all the brush on top of it. So um, more on that later on, just a few seconds. We then went on a walk and we talked about uh, different types of trapping, or different types of traps, figure fall, deadfalls, um, snares, trapping ground feeding birds. We looked at a what looked to be some sort of friction bow, we were, and Paul showed us some some traps that uh, poachers have used in the past. And then myself and Tom, we used uh, we 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 practiced and, and built one of those poachers type snares. Um, just using a simple toggle as a mechanism. None of these complicated notches that need carving at just the right angle and just the right depth for just the right friction. It's just a wooden toggle on a piece of cord and the way it wraps around the, the, the ground anchor is what the trigger is, the hair trigger. So that was quite interesting um, and, and, and um, quite an interesting and cool thing to learn. Then we spent a little bit more trapping practice. We went back up to the teaching area and Paul talked about woolen blankets, the history of woolen blankets, from um, the blankets that the Maasai wear in Africa through to the Hudson Bay Trading Company, woolen blankets that are kind of globally known and he passed one of those around. And then we kind of scaled things down a little and we all got an, an old army issue blanket that I honestly thought I'd seen the last of many years ago. So we've got a brown, Army, a British Army issue woolen a blanket and um, the plan was for to spend the night sleeping in our four-man shelter with a fire inside the shelter on our log beds with our uh, with our um, dead twig mattress with the woolen blanket and I certainly attempted that I have to say but I must admit that um, I fell off once rolling over to try and get the blanket over me I fell off and then the second time I partially fell off and at that point I thought this just isn't working so I, uh, I ditched the blanket and got back into my sleeping bag. I know what it's like to have an uncomfortable night's sleep, I don't need any more reminders. So, uh, so I, yeah, but I tried, I tried the woolen blanket, it wasn't for me so I got into my sleeping bag. Um, uh, just before we got, we got our heads down, they showed us how to panasse chickens and guinea fowl. Slightly different, slightly easier in my opinion than panassing salmon. I guess it's a, a, a tougher piece of meat, but quite a simple technique to do. We had one guinea fowl amongst the four of us and three smaller pussins, 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 small chickens um, amongst the four of us as well. We gorged ourselves on that. And then for me, it was, an, I say an early night, 10, half, 10, 11 o'clock, whatever it was. But for me, I got my head down earlier and because uh, I knew I would endure the woolen blanket wrestle. And I did for the rest of that night or most of the rest of that night. So that was the day that was Friday. Let's see what Saturday brings. It is Sunday, which means that yesterday was Saturday, which means that yesterday was the final day of the course. So. 
I'm back home, I'm degunged, I'm scrubbed, my kit's all clean, sorted and put away again. So I've come out the following day to not only recap on the final day of the course, day six, but also just have a think about the course in general and what my next steps are. What did we do on Saturday then? Normal start in the morning, um, seven o'clock, nine o'clock start over at the teaching area. I got over there a little bit earlier on the final morning because I really wanted to get stuck into the net making. I'd really sort of got a bug for that the day before, so I wanted to go back and finish that off. We then met up in the teaching area around nine o'clock and we took with us our um, hand drill spindles, the cordage that we'd made, the foraging baskets that we made and we set off on a walk as a group and we made our way from where we'd spent the majority of the week to where we spent the very first night, the Sunday night before, the, the, the overnight sort of bivy area that we stayed in. We got there and Paul essentially gave us a brief that we were to break up into pairs and I teamed up with Tom who I'd been working with for the majority of the week. Hello Tom if you're watching. I teamed up with Tom and the brief was that we were to go basically bomb in all sorts of different directions and for it's probably about two and a half, three hours in total to move out and to come back two and a half to three hours later with as many positively identified and foraged things that we could find, that we could consume, that we could eat, that we could drink, that we could use for medicinal purposes. We were to try and find as many species as we could, <coughs> excuse me, but we were also to bring back as much lunch as we could as well. So it wasn't just a case of saying, this is a nettle leaf, this is a bramble, this is a nut. We were actually supposed to bring as much back as we could because that is what we were gonna feed ourselves on for that final lunch time. So Tom and I set off and our plan was, which we acted on, was to go to the furthest point we'd been all week, which was the ponds where we'd done the, the cattail diving because we knew that there'd be some cattails left there. We knew that there was a lot of uh, resources in the local area because Paul had given us a, a, a tour of that during the afternoon we were at the pond. So we went as far as we could, we struck that off and then we worked our way back picking up all sorts. We probably had, I would say, 20, 25 different types of species of tree or plant that we could do something with, either eat or add to a drink or for, had some form of medicinal purposes as well. And we brought back uh, a lot of blackberries, uh, a lot of brambles and a lot of nuts as well to chomp on that lunchtime. The second part of the brief is once we were all back, the challenge was as a team of four now, so we team back up with John and Simon at this point. As a team of four, we were to um, establish a fire by using hand drill. So we used my hand drill, we used um, a, um, a half board that Paul gave us, and as a team, we attempted hand drill. First run through, first run down, loads and loads of dust, loads of smoke, but no actual heat being transferred to the dust to build up that ember. Tom carved out a new notch, we went at it again, and very quickly we achieved a number. And I'm pleased to say of the, of the three groups that were there in total, we were the first group to blow it into flame and establish a fire. And at that point, Paul brought over, um, I think it was a duck egg, if anybody remembers Mork and Mindy from the 80s, I'm showing my age there, it was as big as Mork's egg that he landed on Earth from, this, this huge thing. So we all got one of those, and we added that to our lunch as well as a little bit of fresh rations alongside the forage stuff. Personally, I think this was a real highlight of the week. It was completely on our own. We were up against the clock. We, you know, we, we, we were let loose, if you like, to apply the tree and plant and material identification that Paul had been drip feeding throughout the week to us. It was a really, really good final exercise, I think. It was similar to the final exercise in a way that you do at the end of the elementary course where you've got a handful of tasks and a period of time to achieve them. There was no task at the end of the woodcrafter. However, on this course, the intermediate, there was that sort of final challenge of a forage, ID, feed yourself, get a fire going to consume some of what you've eaten or what you're being given. So a really nice final challenge yeah, that kind of brought everything together. And I certainly know that Tom felt that and I'm sure other people did as well on the course. From there, we made our way back to where we'd spent the majority of the week, so back uphill again. 
and the rest of the day was was basically spent cleaning up kit, handing kit back in if anybody had borrowed any, stripping the shelters down, distributing the shelters, cleaning up the fire pits, things like that. Uh, and, and that was no short day. We didn't finish till sort of 1800, 1830-ish that evening. So it was it was a good solid day. Again, there were no sort of half measures um, on this course as there were none of any of the course I've done. Truly full days uh, and got a lot out of it. So it was a good, very good final day. So let me just have a, been thinking this morning and I've made a few notes here with the things, the, the overall impressions of the course. We've talked about each day individually, let's talk about the course as a whole. I, I'm kind of lost for words a bit because I went on the elementary, it was brilliant. I went on the woodcrafter, it raised the bar. I've just come back off the intermediate, that bar's gone up again. I don't, I, I don't, I don't quite know how high it's going to keep getting. It was a fantastic course, it was a brilliant week. Paul, Henry, James, a massive thank you for the, the time and effort that you put into to all of us, me, but all of us throughout that week. Um, it, it doesn't go unnoticed by anybody. And a big thank you as well to the rest of the people that were in my team, Tom, John and Simon, and of course every other student that was on the course. It, it, it was a good course, everybody grafted. But it, it, was an, it was an amazing course. Why was it good? Well, I've written a few things here. The course synopsis for this, if you look on the Frontier Bushcraft website, say something like, this course starts where other bushcraft courses finish or leave off. And it's absolutely true. And Paul mentioned that at the beginning, at the very beginning of the week, and it's absolutely spot on. It, it really does kind of pick up where the other courses that I've seen advertised, that I've been on myself, finish off. Um, and it does it with, with bells and whistles on it. I think one of the great things for me of the whole week, if we if we put aside the great instruction, the time and the effort that's put in by all the staff that were there into the students that are on it, it was the balance between teaching you and instructing you and coaching you and guiding you and being there for you versus letting you get on with it. A little distance from the from the instructors camp but just letting you get on with it both individually and as a group i don't know how they achieved the balance and, and i don't know if everybody felt the same but i personally felt it was the absolute perfect balance you don't pay money to go on a course to be ignored for six days but equally this is an intermediate course so there is an element a big element i, I suspect of 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 the self-reliance and just being able to get on with it and get into a routine and crack on. They weren't hovering over us. The only time this staff ever came over to sort of check on anything was when it was safety related. And the only thing I can think of was when we initially put the shelters up, they had to make sure that those cross members were, um, were robust enough. Otherwise, a, a serious amount of weight was gonna come down on people probably whilst they were asleep. But, but nothing else, you were kind of left to get on with it on your own. If your fire went out, it went out. If your fire wasn't hot enough, things didn't get cooked. If your bed wasn't well made, you had an uncomfortable night's sleep, there was no kind of, of, of nudging or prompting. You were just left to get on with it. The nudging and prompting came during the teaching sessions when new skills were being introduced. And that was, I, think that's, I think I'm hitting the nail on the head there. If you, if you were putting into practice the skills that you were expected to have by going on an intermediate course, you were left to get on with it, unless it was safety related. If you were putting into practice the skills that you came on an intermediate course to acquire, that's when they were there for you. And I mentioned to Tom, I think on the last morning as we were coming back from the, the, the water run in the morning, that the balance was, I think, and I think Tom agreed, was absolutely spot on. Really, really well done. Balance between ign not ignoring you, but letting you crack on, but being there for you as and when appropriate. Um, a really, really good balance. So, so Paul, Henry, James, um, yeah, for me, and I'm sure for other people as well, you hit the nail well and truly on the head. Uh, a couple of people on Facebook have said to me, I'd love to go and do a course here, or um, I admire Paul, or um, oh, I've noticed that this is not the first course that you've been on with them. I take it you like it. If you are considering pushing the button on a Frontier Bushcraft course, go ahead and push it. 
Um, assuming that you've looked at the objectives and assuming you're realistic about your own skills and your, and your own competency, go ahead and click that button. I, I, I guarantee you won't be disappointed in, in what you get out of the week. Fantastic, um, fantastic courses, fantastic syllabus, fantastic people on the courses, both in terms of the staff and the students that are attending. So yeah, go ahead and treat yourself for next year. <laughs> um, that's it folks, another, another Frontier Bushcraft course, another, another element of a formal training under my belt. What am I gonna do with it? I've been thinking just as I was driving over here to record this video, what do I want to do in the short term? I think the net needle eluded me. I'm, I had three attempts at that. I think I'd probably had more attempts than anybody else. It kept splitting on me. So that's my nemesis. That's, a, that's one of the first things that I want to get cracked is have another attempt at a net needle. Of course, once I've made a net needle, it seems fruitless to make that and not make a net. So I want to get back into the net making game because I enjoyed it. It's quite a relaxing, calm thing to do. But I think more importantly, there's a lot of intricate muscle memory involved in that. Um, and I'm probably gonna forget it. So I wanna dive back into that as soon as possible. The other uh, tree and plant ID, it's just added another layer of confidence on top of what I was already building. But the other thing as well that, that sprung to mind, two things that sprung to mind. One, the, the container that I made out of the bark container that I made out of sweet chestnut. It's still functioning now. We were out foraging with it. My daughter was carrying it the other day as we were foraging some brambles and it worked perfectly. But I love to keep my hand in in that because I think on the course, the day we did that, I was tired. Uh, I didn't take it all in. I didn't probably complete it to the standard that some other people did and that grates on me. So I wanna, I wanna claw back at that. But I think the thing that's perhaps most accessible is most of the cooking that I do when I go bushcrafting is in a pot of some description. Not all of it, I do eggs, I do tomatoes on the fire, things like that, but most of it's done in the pot. So I do want to try some of the techniques, both surface and subsurface cooking that I learned on the course as well. Less to clean up when I get home, I guess. So they're my, they're my takeaways, net needle, netting, container, um, cooking without the use of a pot. So expect to see in the weeks and months to come some videos coming up on my channel looking at those things specifically. If you've stuck through to the end of this video, a massive thank you. I hope you've enjoyed the, the few minutes that we've been together in this video that relate to, of course, six entire days out in the woods. And I, and I hope I've, I've, I've um, I hope that you've enjoyed watching what I got up to, that what we all got up to during that week. I hope perhaps it's given you maybe some ideas of things that you'd like to tinker with and, and perhaps never thought of. And of course, maybe it's given you an idea to, to go away and, and undertake some form of formal training yourself. If you've enjoyed watching the video, please do remember to subscribe if you're not already. There's still some people out there that haven't subscribed. Can you believe the cheek of these people? So please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you if you have like it, share it with whomever you wish to share it with. And let me know in the comments below, what question can I come up with for the end of this video? Let me know in the comments below what you saw me get up to this week that has maybe resonated with you. Maybe it's something you've tried in the past and not been successful at. Maybe it's something you've tried in the past, been successful at, but you've just kind of let it slip or you've forgotten about it. Maybe it's something you'd never heard of or never considered. Let me know in the comments below, something you've seen or heard in this video that's resonated with you and why is it resonated with you. I'll see you in the woods very shortly and thanks for joining me. Cheers.